Hancock, the 2011 world champion, a tricky gate number four. Ward, hard work there in third place in that three-man race previously. But uh, Niels Christian Everson quite clearly not happy back in the pits. This is heat 15 then. Important points on the line. Lindback struggled so far, but he's made it count from gate one and hits the front in the red helmet colour. Coming through in white is Vasilik. A battle for second place with Hancock in yellow. And at the back now is Matty Zegar. But holding second place is Martin Vasilik. Third is Hancock in the yellow helmet. Trailing at the back is Zegar. And Antonio Lindback has finally found his form and has a clear lead here in heat 15. Indeed he has. Once again taking full advantage of the inside gate. And now he's hit the front. Front shows terrific speed. Hancock battling through the traffic. Zagar made a big mistake in the first corner and has got relegated to the back. He's now desperately trying to make up ground here, battling with Hancock there for third and fourth. But Limbeck's out in front. Hancock there just about defending his third position, desperately to pick up any points he can. But Limbeck looks like he'll have this one sewn up. Yep, Antonio Limbeck, this would double his score, of course, one in Terranzano last year in Italy, that remarkable year where there were so many different Grand Prix winners. And Antonio Limbach of Sweden makes gate one count superbly, romps to victory in heat number 15, ahead of Martin Vasilik in the white helmet colour, and Greg Hancock's solitary point puts him on to eight. Limbach the winner, Vasilik second, Hancock third, and Matti Zegar finding it really tough in the Grand Prix. He trailed in at the back. This is what it means now after 15 races here in Auckland. Hancock on eight points, looking good. And Antonio Limbach doubles his score to six. Yeah, giving himself an outside chance for the top eight tonight. We see the tapes are up. Such an advantage to come out of the inside gate. That little bit more grip down there and you drive into the first corner. Zago goes far too wide in the first corner and leaves the door wide open for Vasilik and Hancock to steam up the inside. You watch it again, Zago just makes that run. Bike just lifts momentarily as he enters the corner, runs up to the banking too wide, and Hancock and Vasilik take full advantage and relegate him to the back. But Antonio Limbach, a winner last year, of course, in great form, has struggled so far, but six points, he's got a squeak of the top eight. Yeah, he'll be delighted to uh, get his first win under his belt as we build up to heat number 16 here. Nigi Peterson. Can he make it two wins on the trot? Jason Banyan. Enjoying himself? Krzysztof Kasprzak. Five points from three rides. Freddy Lindgren. Needs to build on the five points. It's getting very tight, isn't it, for the race for the semi-finals and every race absolutely crucial now. Pedersen, couple of lasts, then a win. Can he make gate one count here in heat number 16? He's made a smooth oh, start. Hits the first turn, Nicky Pedersen. Bunyan's holding second place and charging through the inside. Oh. Is there any room? Oh, Just no. the ball, dear, oh, dear. Bunyan down the back straight, three abreast, and he got so wiped out there as Kaspersak serves into second place. Pedersen out in front, red lights on, a restart required. Well, Jason Bunyan knows how tough the Grand Prix is, of course. And here we see the incident again. There's just no room there. Yeah, this front wheel's clipped and down it goes. The airbag underneath his suit there goes off. Looks like the Michelin man. Bam, down he goes. That's fairly new in Speedway, Kelvin. Talk to us about it. Yeah, we've got an introduction and now a jacket that's worn underneath the suit that will go off. It's got a canister and it blows up to protect the rib cage. Your torso part of your body, in actual fact, and uh, we can clearly see it working to good effect there. And a standing ovation for Jason Bunyan, the New Zealand representative here in Auckland, of course. Heat 16, second time of asking. Can Pedersen do it again off the inside gate? What a start, smooth as you like for the three times world champion. Second place is Christoph Kasperzak, and third now is Frederick Lindgren. But Nicky Pedersen has worked hard all winter. He is a supreme athlete, trains hard at the gym, and has even hired tracks privately during the winter to test his machinery. He is the ultimate pro. He's got Kasperzak chasing after him, but he's just about holding the lead. Indeed he is, but Kasperzak's faster than Nicky Pedersen. Pedersen really having to defend out in front. Kasperzak desperate for points in second place, putting a lot of pressure on the three-time champion. Lindgren's in third place, they're close here. Pedersen once again, such a tough customer to pass. Stamps his authority on the race. Yeah, he's opened up a gap now. It was very close for a time there between Pedersen and Kasperzak, who's second. Freddie Lindgren third, of course. Lindgren won his first Grand Prix of his career in his home country. Oh! He's to second as well. Oh! Oh, 
lifts as well, just about maintains control of the bike and sneaks through to second now. Here comes Kasper Zak for more, but Lindgren holds the line. Terrific stuff from Lindgren to surge into second place late on in the race. Great effort from him. Kasper Zak's going to be gutted about that, but Nicky Pedersen, back-to-back -back race wins. He means business now. He's kept his Grand Prix alive, Nicky Pedersen. Two straight wins now. Lindgren second and Christoph Kasper Zak in third place. Bunyan disqualified, of course. Pedersen on the verge of the top eight now with two straight wins. Frederick Lindgren hangs on in there with a host of riders on seven points apiece. Second time of asking and Pedersen makes no mistake. He's there off the inside, charges clear into the first corner. Kasper Zak's going to be gutted here because momentarily he was charging, searching for a way through to the front. Late on in the race, he gets relegated to third place by a great move from Lingren there. On the back wheel, squeezes him out of second place. Super stuff from Nicky Pedersen, though. Back-to-back -back wins. And look at that. He's got the inside gate again for his fifth ride. A good chance to make the semis. Yep, that'll be Heat 18, and he's up against the champion. Feel the rush for the most exciting race on water yet. This is going to be a good race. The main concern here is just to be consistent, reliable and finish every day. Talented riders go head to head against competitors and the elements. This is probably the hard uh, race because we don't know exactly what to expect about the weather condition and the water. It's superb racing and outstanding sportsmanship. Just who will make the cut? Aquabike World Championship 2013 on Edge Sport. Be a part of the action this June on Edge Sport. Enter their world of adventure. I couldn't catch up after that. Uh, lost my speed and that was it. Revealing the passion of those who play to the edge. The biggest adrenaline rush in Action Sports World 2014. The biggest names of the skateboarding world. Some of the best riders from all eras here. Will convene for a good cause. It's going to be interesting this year. In Olorama 2014. Get ready for an explosive season of hardcore racing. You're racing against the best guys in rallycross. In FIA World Rallycross Championship 2014. Yeah, that was awesome. When the odds are stacked against them. I needed to really show myself this year. The only way is to move forward. Crowd's good, track's good, all's good. In BMX Lane 1, inside BMX Supercross 2014. A month of awe-inspiring feats this June on Edge Sports. I'm just gonna do my best and have time for my best and don't do for everybody else. When you perform well in the time trials, you feel really good going into today's. You gotta watch those corners because they're pretty tight and you, and you don't need a whole lot of speed for the straightaway, so there's definitely gonna be moves going down. It's my home track, so I definitely wanna win here. Lane one, inside BMX Supercross 2014 on Edge Sport. Welcome back to the Buckley Systems New Zealand FIM Speedway Grand Prix. Greg Hancock spent his career on the road and knows only too well the importance of home life. Split between Sweden and California throughout the year, en route to the Southern Hemisphere, we stopped off and took the chance to catch up with the two times world champion. Gosh, being away from home is always tough. Here we are sitting in California here. It's home for me and I love doing what I do so I never look back. I value my time at home in the winter and that's probably one of the most crucial things. Do the fun stuff around home, be a regular family and uh, not just being on the road. So I have no complaints, man. I, I just love what I do. I, I want to go racing and the sacrifice is that you, uh, you got to travel a lot and uh, it's part of the game. So uh, we don't dwell on that. Team Hancock is ever-expanding. Greg and his wife Jenny are soon expecting the arrival of their third child. I love having kids around. They give me inspiration, you know. Of course, they support me. They love the sport. They motivate me, you know. It all starts from a good home life, you know. If, if things are good at home, you come here with a positive attitude. And uh, for me, things are, they couldn't be better, you know. It's, now we're just waiting to see if it's going to be a boy or a girl and uh, how we're going to keep my kids from uh, turning that one into a speeder rider. You know, I feel like I'm, I'm 17, 18 years old again, and that's what, um, that's what the motivation is, you know. 
Speedway legend Bruce Penhall was Greg's hero, but there's no thought yet of Hancock hanging up his leathers. The day I wake up and believe that I can't beat all these guys is the day that, uh, that I'll hang it up, you know, and I, I don't foresee that in the near future. It's hard for me just to go out and ride the bike and, and not get competitive. I had a lot of that this winter with my kids, which is different, but uh, I'm still trying to keep them behind me. I roll with it. I, don't, I never put a, a time limit on my career, and, you know, my head is, is uh, very strong in the game, and uh, the body is probably the thing that'll give up before the head does, but uh, as long as I can keep it rolling, I'm going for it. Yeah, good to see Greg Hancock still enjoying his racing as much as ever. Fabulous achievement. Never missed a Grand Prix, two times a world champion, and it's keen as ever. He's out again in heat 20, but this is heat 17 now. Thomas Gollum. Gollum with seven points. Nils Christian Evenson. Needs to build on that. Freddy Lindgren. Pressure on Lindgren as well for points here. Martin Batulik. Struggling a little bit tonight. An important race, this one, Kelvin. Every rider needs points for the semi-finals. Indeed they do. It's been a tough night. Riders dropping points left, right and centre. Down to the action now. What can Gollum do off the inside gate in heat number 17? Seven points to his name, and he's hit the front. And once again, that inside gate is working a treat. Everson is second. Lindgren working hard here. But Kelvin, gate number one, tell us about it. Get the inside gate, the red helmet colour. It is working a treat. Yeah, it's a massive advantage. It's a temporary track here, and clearly the circuit has just got more grip there on the inside, all the way to the first corner, and it gives you that advantage. Well, Thomas Gollum making good use of it. Once again, second place is Niels Christian Everson, so unlucky last time out when he was disqualified, when quite clearly he was trying to avoid an anticipated crash in front of him, which didn't happen in the end. He's got second place, and that would give him a couple of points here in heat number 17 for the Dane, who has been a hero for Denmark in the World Cup in the past, of course. And at third yeah. place right now is Freddy Lindgren and trailing in the back. Martin Vasilik finding it tough in his first full season in the Grand Prix. He is indeed, and you've got to say that Everson had a super season last year and he's back in the Grand Prix. It's going to be time for second. No, Everson hangs on, but got about in front. Bounces back with three points. The poles are delighted. Takes advantage of that inside gate once again. Gollum, the race winner, that's enough to get him into the semi-finals. Niels Christian Everson, unlikely that he'll make it now. Lindgren has to wait. Here's the uh, score chart. Gollum tops the score chart on ten. Lindgren in the top eight, now on eight points. But will he stay there? Everson's on seven, and Vasilik will not make the semi-finals. Five points to his name. Yeah, we'll watch the inside again. The bike just charges to the first corner. You can see how much more grip he's getting. The front wheel's off the ground all the way to the first turn, comfortably into the lead, and that's where he stays. He has a relatively straightforward ride. Everson around the inside is a little bit rutty and bumpy on the inside in the first corner, but he tucks in there and takes advantage. He misses as a start, but just gets that little bit more of a run around the inside. We've seen one or two riders do that. But Gollop, moving on to 10 points, he's had the two wins from the inside gate, taking full advantage. Yep, three race wins in total for Mr G, as we move on to heat number 18, and guess who's got the inside gate here? Nigi <laughs> Peterson. Two lasts, two wins. Ty Wolfenden. Really enjoying himself tonight. Chris Holder. Needs points here. Antonio Lindbach. Fast last time out. Big race this one then, heat number 18. Can Mickey Benison make it three wins on the trot? Can Ty Woffenden and Chris Holder book their place in the semi-finals here? Away from the start, going into that Pedersen. first turn. Pedersen very quick indeed. And Woffenden and Holder having a real battle for second and third. Holder's got speed, but Woffenden very quick on the inside for second in the blue helmet colour. Holder's going to come back for more, and they're closing the gap on Pedersen as well. What a oh. race developing here! Oh, coming off the fourth turn of the opening lap there. Holder had to shut the throttle because Woffenden closed the door. Woffenden's got speed. Pedersen was great away from the tapes on the inside. But we've seen earlier how hard he is to pass. Woofenden's fast in second place. The world champion back in third place, beginning to struggle a little bit. Lim back out the back, but Pedersen out in front. Oh! Woofenden on the back wheel nearly runs into the back of Nicky Pedersen. Pedersen survives again. He's out in front, winding it on. Pedersen is really having to ride the wheels off that motorbike because Woofenden looks quicker. Holder's third. Pedersen with that lead, but look how close Woofenden's getting down the back straight. Will he go high? Will he try and cut up the inside? inside. He does try that inside line. Down to the line we go. Who's going to get there? Pedersen nicks it on the line. Super
Super race, best race of the night so far. Ty Wooford had made that. Great performance in second place from the rider coming back into the Grand Prix series. Pedersen was out in front, rode a great line, but it's speedway there.